Okay, this is really cool. This is an app called Enchanted LLM, and it gives me a chat GPT like interface, but it's not connecting to OpenAI's APIs. It's actually connected to an instance of Olama that's running on my local computer. So I can do any prompt, uh, what martial art, and you can see I've selected a, I can select a, a model to use. And these are the models that I have installed on the computer where Olama is running. I can do Mistral Latest. That's kind of the golden child in the world of open language models right now. So I'm gonna use that. And it happens to fit in the memory of the machine that I'm working on right now, which is an M1 MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of memory. So let's see, it should go relatively fast because it doesn't have to run on the CPU. So you can see Olama crunching away on the computer and ultimately I get a response on my phone. This is really cool for a lot of reasons. Uh, if you don't know what Olama is, by the way, Olama is a way of running language models, open language models on your local computer. So you don't have to use a paid API like OpenAI or Anthropic or any of the other providers of paid LLM APIs. This is interesting because local language models have been getting really, really good lately. Some of them coming close to or even surpassing, I think, ChatGPT 3.5. As far as I know, no open language model has surpassed GPT-4 yet, but uh, it's not hard to imagine a scenario where that happens because they've gotten so much closer over the past weeks and months. So those are some of the reasons that this is pretty interesting. If I were to use Olama locally on my computer, I would get a basic kind of chat interface on the command line. It wouldn't really give me the ability to save conversations, but it, so it, it gives me a conversation history similar to ChatGPT. I can go back to old conversations. I can do pretty much everything I can do with ChatGPT. One of the reasons apps like this have started to sprout up and will probably continue to sprout up is because the Olama API is really, really simple and super easy to integrate with. There's another open source project called Chatbot Olama. It's a Node.js app that you can just clone and run locally on your computer. And it also integrates with Olama, similar to the way that the Enchanted LM app does. And it gives you an interface that's even more like ChatGPT. This is a little bit older news. I think this, is, this project's at least a few months old. What are some popular cold brew coffee brands? So yeah, this one is even more like ChatGPT. Uh, it's down to like the colors and the icons and everything. One of the other reasons these open language models are so interesting is that they don't have the liability or they don't have to worry about the liability that OpenAI does. Companies like OpenAI and Anthropic constantly have to kind of skirt around giving responses that might get them sued, right? I don't think it's feasible for these companies that provide these language models as a service like Anthropic and OpenAI to reduce their liability without diluting the responses such that the fidelity of the information that you get is reduced. I don't think that's actually possible. To be politically correct and to avoid responding with something that might get them in trouble, they would have to dilute the responses to some extent, either by making them, you know, refusing to talk about certain topics, which on the surface doesn't sound that bad, but like there's a lot of gray area where there might be some a legitimate response that would not get them in trouble that it would censor because it's trying to avoid the liability, right? And then you can imagine that another way where they kind of reduce liability is by diluting responses and making them more vague and less specific, even in cases where the model is capable of a more specific response. And that might be because a more specific response that contains information that might be perceived as inaccurate might get them in trouble or things like that. So what I'm trying to get at is these open models do less of the censoring and filtering on their side and allow us, the users, to do the censoring and filtering as we see fit. And that can be a huge advantage in a lot of situations. There is a bit of a gotcha in setting this up. So I do wanna show you that. If you install Olama on a Mac, I think it comes with an installer and you wind up with a, a llama in the menu bar here that you can exit and update and restart. It's got like a little menu. One thing to know is that when you run Olama, by default, it's only listening on the loopback IP address, which means it's not going to be accessible outside of the local computer. To get Olama to listen on all interfaces, instead of listening on the loopback interface, you're gonna have to set an environment variable. Um, we're gonna do export Olama host equals 0.0.0.0. .0. That'll get it to listen on all interfaces available to the computer. If you want it to listen on a specific IP, you can do that as well, but I find that this works fine in most scenarios. If you do have the default Olama installation running, where you have the llama in the menu bar, you're gonna to wanna to quit out of that, set the environment variable, and then do llama serve. 
Of course, um, you're gonna wanna look up the IP on your computer. So uh, I have config, um, grab inet. So I can see my interface is 192.168.1.72. So, so when you set up Olam on the phone, you're gonna go into settings and then you're gonna enter that IP. And then the default port is 11434. I think you can change that using another environment variable, I'm guessing. I haven't played with that, but those are the first things you need to do to get this set up. If you go to the Enchanted LLM GitHub page, there's some instructions down here. Uh, I think this is a proxy that forwards incoming traffic to your loopback IP, which would be another way to do it. But I think maybe I'm miss missing something here, but this seems a little more complicated than just setting that Olama underscore host environment variable. Um, but yeah, either way should work. We have all these closed language model providers like Anthropic and OpenAI, and they provide APIs for developers. I think what we might start to see is open source projects that leverage language models because they're not a hosted, ser hosted paid service. They can't possibly provide the compute to actually use that project that leverages language models. So I'm, I'm guessing what'll happen is in these open source projects, kind of like in Enchanted LLM, there'll be configuration to configure where your compute power is, right? So maybe that means a machine running in your closet, a machine with an NVIDIA card or an Apple M2 studio or whatever. Those open source projects will reach out to whatever Olama instance you want. And maybe, maybe there'll be paid services where I pay some company some money and they give me some API key and I can point all my apps that use Olama or use the Olama interface to that compute power. And they'll provide those APIs for all my open source language model enabled apps to use. I think all this is really interesting and I'm excited to see how it pans out. I think it's really cool that we're kind of at a stage where theoretically we could shut off our internet connection and have one of these language models running on our computer or somewhere on our local network. And despite our internet connection being shut off, we can essentially query all of human history via these language models. Uh, I don't know, there's something about that that excites me. So let me know what you think of all this. Are there any other projects I should check out that interface with Olama? Are you planning to buy any hardware to leverage all of this? Maybe are you planning to buy a machine to put in the closet? Maybe a new GPU? I am curious to see everyone's thoughts on Mac versus Nvidia. Like this is, this is turning out to be a huge debate, right? With the Apple Silicon, you have the shared memory where you can essentially use all the computer's memory as VRAM, which is super useful for language models. Or do you go the NVIDIA route, which uh, they're, they're a bit faster, but I think even the kind of high-end cards, the consumer grade ones only have, you know, 24 gigabytes of memory, which is not enough to load some of these lar larger models. I think there's a lot of interesting hardware choices on the table for consumers now. So, so yeah, let me know what you think of all this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.